In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. All right, man, this is getting creepy and weird, man. Like, for real, for real. Now, have you ever had a thought about something? You didn't tell nobody, you didn't talk about it out loud, but then you get on your phone and that exact same thing that you was thinking about is on your phone? Man, watch this right here. Your brain, but of course it goes further. So in this one, they said, can they understand um, the inner monologue, the things you're saying to yourself in your own mind? Mind you, by the way, when you dream, your dream, like your visual cortex runs in reverse, so your dreams are no longer safe. Um, but we'll try this. So they had people watch a video and just narrate what was going on in the video in their mind. So the woman, she's hit in the back, she falls over. This is what the computer reconstructed the person thinking. See, a girl looks just like me, get hit in the back, and then she's dying off. So our thoughts, like, are starting to be decoded. Yeah, just think about what this means for authoritarian states, for instance. So basically, these group of scientists got together and add human subjects and put them into a MRI machine and map their brain, right? And they they asked them to, they asked them certain questions and they told them to watch certain things and to visualize what it is that they're watching, right? Or talk to themselves while AI at the same time, who's never seen what they're seeing, mapped out their brain to what it is that they see. What? What? Bro, this goes deeper than what we think it is, man. So the thoughts that we're thinking might not even be our own thoughts. Of course, we already know that certain beings in other realms, they, you know, suggest things to us. But this is on a whole nother level. So it's not just our phones listening to us and, you know, the cameras are watching us. There's also something else. Watch this. Torx of this. How about, can we go from Wi-Fi radio signals, you know, sort of like the Wi-Fi routers in your house, they're bouncing off radio signals that work sort of like sonar. Can you go from that to where human beings are to images? So what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. Now, hell no. It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of like CIA, FBI, uh, governmental officials have this information already and it's just we are starting to get control over it and starting to utilize it but i i think that they already have this technology and it's already being implemented what does it actually look like in the astral realm when you're astral projecting what does it look like my name is Kay, and in this video, I'm going to be describing my experiences with what I've seen in the astral realm. Now, it all depends on where you're at. When I'm astral traveling in my bedroom, like right around my physical body or in my neighborhood, you know, places like that, it looks exactly like what you would imagine it to look like during nighttime, because I always astral project at nighttime and when I'm in my bedroom, it's dark. It's hard to see unless I have like a nightlight on or there's some light from somewhere. I often like to leave a some sort of light on so I can actually see. And if I go around my house in the neighborhood, I can see the lights from outside. I often travel through the woods. I live in, a, in the mountains, so I go through the mountains a lot and it's dark, but I could see the moon, I could see the stars, and they give some sort of brightness to it. But overall, it's dark, and there seems to be a natural darkness to the astral realm. Anyways, things seem a little shadowy, a little bit difficult to see, there's not quite sharp edges, I have to get up really close to something to see it really well. Now, when I'm astral projecting, up above the earth and I'm heading out into outer space, that looks different. I'm moving really fast, so I see the stars moving by me. Things, you know, in outer space just really fast. And then when I'm out in outer space, I could see the stars and the planets, but I've noticed I was like zoom in on certain planets. I oftentimes see three planets in particular. I believe there's a reason why I'm seeing these three planets, but that's for a different video. And when I'm looking at these planets, 
I don't tend to see a whole lot of stars or anything like that. But once I start traveling around, you know, it opens up. I could see what you would imagine outer space to actually look like. It's not as dark. It's not as shadowy. Things seem to be defined much better. Like I have a better visual when I'm in outer space as opposed to when I'm on Earth. I don't know why that is, but I see better out in outer space than I do on Earth. <laughs> Things are crisper, cleaner. Now, a really cool thing about astral projection is you end up in these other realms. And when you're in the fifth dimension, in these higher astral realms, whatever you think, you can create. So I've been in many situations where I am literally creating the world around me. Sometimes it, it feels like a, a dream almost, where I could see the earth, but it looks a little bit different. Or I'm on another planet, I see people and beings and creatures, almost like a dream, but it's real. And I can interact with them, I could change things. I, it's almost like lucid dreaming in a way. But I know that I'm in my astral body. I know that I'm in a higher astral realm. I know that I am not lucid dreaming. You can feel it. There is a distinction and you know it when you're in these higher astral realms. But you can literally create your world. So in the fifth dimension, you can play around with things. But you also interact with real entities, real humans, other humans that are traveling around in their astral bodies. Or you may see aliens or other entities like angelic beings and such. So it is really incredible. If you want to know more about the fifth dimension experiences, comment down below and I'll go a little bit more into that in a separate video. But in short, the astral realm looks different depending on where you're at. And you know it, like you will know where on the spectrum you're at. It's, um, you, you can't get the lower astral realms confused with the higher astral realms. The lower astral realms are something similar to hell. That's where shadow people and shadow parasites reside, demons, and really low vibe energy entities. Some people have literally described it as being in hell because it's so frightening. The energy is so ooh, ooh, intense and just negative. You know that you're in the lower astral realms. It's a terrifying place. So you cannot get that confused with the higher astral realms where everything is beautiful and there's angelic beings and you feel a sense of peace and love and happiness. So there's all these different um, places in between. But I really wanted to just describe what it visually looks like in these different places. If you've experienced anything like this before, comment down below and please let me know. I know that I'm not going to speak for everyone else. Some people see different things. So please share your experiences. I'm really interested in knowing. And for more videos like this, be sure to follow me at Astral K. I have a lot of videos on how to astral project, shadow people, aliens, and much, much more. So be sure to follow me and I'll see y'all soon. Hey, this was a longer video, but I really enjoyed this. I, I always find it interesting to listen to anyone that's been astral projecting or remote viewing. I, I would love to be able to do something like this. I think that that would be so much fun. Like that'd be so interesting. I, there's so many places that I would like to explore if astral projection works in the real world. I would like to go to like Area 51 or something like that, but my luck, they would probably have some kind of astral projection barrier. As soon as you hit it, you just come back to your body. That would suck. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts about astral projection and or remote viewing. It's funny because I've had a, a remote viewing video in the past and there was someone in my comments that said that they can remote view and one time they, re they remote viewed into the White House while Donald Trump was the president still and that Donald Trump was aware that they were there and through his mind asked what that individual that was remote viewing was doing. I don't know if that's a serious comment or not, but I enjoyed the crap out of it. That was hilarious and awesome at the same time. Also, if you're ever interested in these videos and want to check out these videos yourself, 
I am putting a link to every video that shows in my videos in the description. So if there's any video that you see, just check the links out. They're all there. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you see this graph here, only 13% of the viewers that watch these videos are actually subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed but keep coming back for more of this content. You need metal, resin, and crystals. The resin coming from the earth, carbon, it's basically carbon. So it's organic, but not organic in a sense like organic food. It vacuums in the negative energy, it sucks it in. The metal repels it. So now you have attraction repulsion at very high frequencies, which is chaotic. It's not a balanced energy. Now, when you put crystals inside this matrix, the crystals transform this unbalanced, chaotic energy energy smooths it out it's a mystery to us crystals have that ability because of their structure each crystal gives off different frequency just like each color gives off a different frequency and we're all about frequencies everything is frequencies you got 50 trillion cells that make up your body that vibrate resonate and they communicate with electrochemically with frequencies they talk to each other I really find this individual's content extremely fascinating. I like listening to what he has to say about the Organite generators and how he makes them. Let me know what you guys think of this individual's content because I would like to pull up more of his content. He has a lot of stuff to talk about, about different structures and crystals and frequencies and how he makes his Organite pyramids and everything. It's really interesting stuff. You won't believe what I found in the shops today. That's right, it's a clear ketchup. There is no way. Let's try it out. All right, I'm in the store right now and <gasps> no freaking way so there really is a clear ketchup all right so i got the ketchup right here and yes it's actually real clear ketchup and we got some fries right here and we're gonna try it out open it up we're gonna pour some on the side right here oh my god why does it look so so slimy oh so slimy well time to taste it three two oh my god it literally tastes exactly like ketchup i don't know how they made that happen it was I I think I'll pass. Why would time have a beginning? It could be that time is an emergent quality of reality. I give you an analogy, boy. What I mean by that is we all know what temperature means intuitively. Something's hot, you feel it. Something's cold, you feel it. Your body understands those concepts. What physics has done is it's gone deeper into the concept of temperature and revealed that it is nothing but the average motion of the particles making up the environment. So if the molecules are moving really quickly, you've got a hot environment. If the molecules are really moving slowly, it's a cold environment. So temperature emerges from the motion of particles. And in that sense, temperature is this emergent idea that rests upon more fundamental ideas. Maybe that's true of time. Maybe time as we know it is a property that only makes sense in certain environments when there's enough stuff arranged in the right patterns. But fundamentally, maybe there are atoms or molecules of time which when not arranged in the form that we are familiar with, don't yield time as we know it. That's a heavy one. Yeah. I know there's way smarter people than I am out there, so you could probably answer those questions way better than I can. Look, people, this antenna at the top has a wire following it all the way down the building, all the way down into the ground. It's because this antenna is harnessing the ether. The ether is the element that fills all space with infinite free energy. And all of the energy that this is producing is, going, is being grounded and sent straight into the ground. All of these buildings from the 17 to 1800s have these antennas, spikes on the top of them because they are all doing the exact same thing. It was a complete different world They've got rid of this technology because now they're capitalizing and making you a slave to work to pay the bills for something that is free. Look, here's another one. Antenna being grounded again on another building. We need to wake up and realize that there is free energy. Once we all realize this, the whole system goes down.
I don't argue what this individual is saying necessarily. I definitely do believe that there is a way for unlimited free energy. I do not believe that that's what that is necessarily. I, I really truly think that those are just lightning grounds so that if the steeples get struck by lightning, all the charge goes to the conductor rod that's underneath the place. That's why the wire looks so fresh. That's not old wire. That's something that's been kept up to date so that the steeples don't get destroyed. I, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that those are just lightning grounds and that's it. I don't think they're made for any kind of electrical uh, improvement or any kind of power management other than to capture lightning and discharge it off of the building. Let me know in the comments though. Scientists say this is probably how the pyramids were built. And I'm willing to bet that they also use those excavators as well to help build the pyramids. I see where they're going with this. Maybe that is definitely how did they cut the, the blocks for the pyramid. But now we have to figure out how did they move them. What did they do to construct the pyramids otherwise? Because it looks like to me that yeah he split that rock in half with the chisel and hammer. But they're going to use that excavator in a truck to move those stones. I guarantee it. I don't think that that's how they built the pyramids, unless they had that technology back in the day, maybe, but I don't think so. You know, it's interesting. There were years ago when they did the, the Mars uh, uh, images and they found that there were these obelisks and strange looking objects on Mars. I, I went out to the Goddard Space Flight Center here outside DC to meet with uh, Mark Carlotto and some other scientists there. And they said, yep, yeah, it's been pixelated out for the public, but there are structures there. And uh, they were very ancient, but we're talking millions of years old, millions. And I was out in California after I had disclosed this to some people, and a man came up to me from JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs, and I didn't know him. He knew who I was and said, Dr. Greer, here's the issue. You're right, those exist, but we can't disclose that. I said, why? It's not an operational ET device. It's not, you know, it's old. He says, yes, but you don't understand how powerful the, that this information is. I said, why? He says, if this was disclosed, it would collapse the fundamentalist orthodox belief systems of every religion on earth. I said, what? This science and this evidence is being kept secret for religious reasons? He says, yes. I find this interesting and a little hard to believe. Now, don't get me wrong. There might be structures on Mars and all that. That's cool. But to say that they're keeping this information from us because of religious beliefs, I just don't know if that would be the case or not. Because why? Why would they do that necessarily? In fact, I would think that they would want to, if they were such an evil organization that wanted to mock a god or religion why would they not release this information to help disprove religion not saying that i'm against it or i'm with it i'm just saying that i just don't see this being facts because if they really wanted to take religion out of society they would do this because a lot of people truly believe that there is no outer space there's nothing outside of the earth and its firmament. So I, I just don't see why this would be a fact if that's the case. Why not use this to help convince people that there is no religion if that's the ultimate goal for these organizations? 
So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you really think that this is real? Because I don't think so. I'm starting to not like Dr. Greer as much as I used to because I see that he does talk a lot about things that just can't be proven otherwise. Everybody that watches these videos should know how I feel about NASA. I truly don't believe that they're a genuine company. I do believe that they're a money laundering company. Now, does that does it? That doesn't mean that they're not working for space programs and doing things for the military and stuff. But I truly think that a lot of information that they give us is way watered down and or just non-existent. Like that picture, for example. Now, I don't. I don't know if that photo is a real NASA photo. I haven't gone out of my way to go see the NASA photos, but I see this a lot. And I just, why would they do something so careless as far as making these photos look real, but you're, you, you are literally using copy and paste images that are easily distinguishable from each other. Like you can tell those are all the same clouds and all of the same patterns there's no change up there and you don't think that someone's gonna find out about that dude what the fuck <laughs> who's there Honestly, I'm not sure if this was a real video or not. I always have my doubts when it comes to these videos, but it sounded like that piano was about to start playing Runaway. If you know what that song is, then you know. Where did Jesus go when he disappeared from the Bible? In the Bible, he's gone. Age of 12, poof, he's gone. Where did he go? He goes to Egypt. And when I take people on these grand tours of Egypt, I take them to the place where Jesus actually slept, where he lived for some time in Coptic Cairo. The bed that he slept in is a shrine that's still there till this very day and it's guarded. And so he went to Egypt. Why did he go to Egypt? He went there to learn the Egyptian mysteries. From who? Tahuti. He was a student of Tahuti, right? So now when we say, could he either be Tahuti or as a student of Tahuti? Well, that's a much deeper conversation. That might be a whole other podcast because this guy was such a wizard and magician. He had he had come back and incarnated at will over 10,000 lives, right, according to the animal tablets, over the course of 100,000 years. Could he have gotten bored with that and said, you know, I want to come through a womb of a woman and come out and see life as a human being and regain all my memory? So it's a possibility. But either way, he disappears out of the Bible at the age of 12. He goes to, to uh, Egypt. He learns the Egyptian mysteries. Then there's a record of him going throughout Egypt into Nubia and then even leaving there and going to Tibet. What did he learn in Tibet? Yeah. Yeah. In Tibet, he learned how to heal with his hands. He learned the art of Qigong, Reiki, and all these other healing modalities through moving energy through the body. So he became a healer, again, something that would be considered to be magic-like. And then from there, and that was confirmed by the Dalai Lama, by the way. Then he moved from there down into India, learning the mystic arts. Again, more, quote-unquote, magic. And from there, teaching reincarnation all the way back to Egypt. And then from there, the Bible picks back up at the age of 32. He says, I call, God says, I call my son out of Egypt. And then the next thing you know, he appears at the age of 32, riding in on the back of a, a donkey into Jerusalem. I know a lot of people really aren't a huge fan of Billy Carson, but I did find this particular video really interesting because I am curious about the history of Jesus. I never really heard about Jesus and how he became who he was as far as once he was born and through his childhood into adulthood. I found this extremely interesting because it's really fun to theorize about that. Like if that is the case and he is this uh, super powerful being that just traveled to all these different places and learning their ways to become the 
Jesus that we know, I think that's pretty interesting personally. So leave a comment down below on what you guys think, because I know there's probably a lot of people that will leave this video because I played Billy Carson, but I hope that you did stay just so that you can tell me about this situation a little bit better, because maybe this is just all completely false. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that gives me mild anxiety because that's just horrifying looking. That's one of the reasons why I don't like going into water in the ocean unless I'm in like a submarine or a boat because that is, if that was real, no thank you. Now I have some friends that are really all about animals like that. Would you guys befriend that? Because I, I don't think I have it in me. I, I'd rather befriend a snake. <laughs> You will no longer need to pay for electricity for your life. Hello everyone. Today I continue to show you how to create a free electric generator, power up to 8,000 watts. The materials are only from a car generator and a large motor. If you like this video, please give me like, share, and leave your opinion in the comments. Thank you.
this is extremely fascinating. I had one of this individual's videos on a previous video and I could not find it, but I've actually found who makes these generators. His name is King Invention. He, he will be the last link in the comment down below. I found this extremely fascinating. I do not know if it's real or not. I almost have everything to make one of these if that's the case. I'm extremely interested in this. I would hope that maybe in the future, because this video that you're seeing was just one day ago, I'm hoping that maybe this will take off and he'll lay out blueprints so it's a little bit easier to digest than just watching a super sped up video. But this is extremely interesting and he might be onto something. I was a huge fan that he actually had a, a meter plug-in outlet to show, to show that it was actually providing a 24 volts and it, this was interesting. I really like this. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are because this was pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If any of these videos were of interest to you, please check the links down in the description. They're in the order that these videos played. So with that being said, have a good day.